Hello and welcome back to the course in quantum mechanics. We are still on the fourth chapter of this course. Before we proceed with this lesson, let us first review some of the concepts we have discussed so far. So, in your classical mechanics, you have described uh, the angular momentum, and it is actually a three dimensional. So, in classical mechanics, angular momentum is defined as R cross P. And usually, this is associated with uh, an, an, an object orbiting a certain uh, axis. If an object is spinning on its own axis, the angular momentum is given by I, the moment of inertia, times omega, where omega is the angular velocity. So this is for a spinning object. So in, to in total, there are two types of angular momentum. And the total angular momentum is just the vector sum of these two angular momentum. For instance, Earth orbits around the sun, so it has an orbital angular momentum. But uh, it's also spinning on its own axis, so it has a, an, has a spin angular momentum so for this uh, lesson we will be talking about a quantum version of the orbital angular momentum So, in quantum mechanics, an electron actually both have a spin angular momentum and an orbital angular momentum, similar to the analogy that we have earlier about uh, the Earth. So, the electron orbits around the nucleus, so it has a position or a distance r from the nucleus, and it's a momentum p, therefore it will have an angular momentum of r cross p. But it's also spinning it on its own axis, so it also has a spin angular momentum. Now, focusing only on the orbital angular momentum, uh, the quantum numbers associated with this quantity are the quantum number L and the quantum number M sub L. So L corresponds to the orbital angu uh, angular momentum. Now, in classical mechanics, we define uh, the angular momentum as the cross product of the position vector and the momentum vector. And in the Cartesian coordinates, taking the cross product of these two, where R uh, has uh, components x, y, z, and P has components p x, p y, p z, and you will get this uh, result. So this uh, implies that this term here uh, with the vector x hat is the x component. Uh, this term here, the y component, and this term here is the z component of the orbital angular momentum. So, there are three components, Lx, Ly, and Lz. Now, in our previous chapters, we have discussed about the commutation relation of position and momentum, x and specifically px, the x component in one dimension. So, we have... Uh, we have uh, derived uh, the commutation relation of x and p, or rather x and px. This is equal to i h bar. Now, similarly, the commutation relation for y and py is also i h bar, and z and pz is also i h bar. x, y and z doesn't commute with each other or so sorry they commute with each other meaning x and y the commutation of x and y is zero y and z is also zero uh, the px py and pz also commute with each other and the rest actually commute with each other the rest of these uh components commute with each other except for x and px y and py and z and pz now using those commutation relation we can then obtain uh, the commutation relation of the components of the orbital angular momentum. In fact, 
The components of the orbital angular momentum doesn't or don't commute with each other. So there are uh, LX and LY doesn't commute with each other. Uh, in fact, the commutation relation is equal to I H bar LZ. Similarly for LY and LZ and LZ and LX. So from here, if you recall our lesson on the generalized uncertainty principle, there is some commutation relation involved there and uh, expectation value of the commutation relation, then uh, we can get the, the uncertainty relation between uh, the uncertainties of LX and LY, and it's, it must be greater than or equal to H bar over 2, the absolute value of the expectation value of LZ. So we use this commutation results to get uh, these uh, three uncertainty relationships. Uh, similarly with what we did, sorry, uh, the total angular momentum, on the other hand, or rather the square of the total angular momentum is compatible with all its components and the Hamiltonian. So L squared is comp uh, compatible with LX, or it commutes with LX, LY, and LZ. And it also commutes with the Hamiltonian. Now, uh, this means that L squared, uh, say one of its components, say LZ, and the Hamiltonian, uh, both or all share the same eigenfunctions, psi, L, M. Uh, I would like to emphasize that if two compatible uh, observables commute with each other, then one property is that they can they can share the same eigenfunctions, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they must share the same eigenfunctions. In this case, only their z component, so the x component and the y component, doesn't have the same eigenfunctions as L z, L squared, and the Hamiltonian. So the eigenfunctions are actually the functions that we have discussed in the previous lesson, the spherical uh, harmonics, uh, y l n, a function of theta. So similar with what we did when we discussed about the uh, harmonic oscillator, wherein we introduced ladder operators, there's, we can also define ladder operators for uh, the angular momentum, orbital angular momentum. So L plus and L minus. The plus implies racing operator. The minus implies lowering operator. And it's uh, equal to LX plus I L Y. So the effect of just of the ladder operator is to change the value of M or M sub L by one unit. So for L plus, the racing operator, it increases the value of M by one. For the lowering operator, L minus, it decreases the value of m by 1. So you can think of uh, the operator as like this. It acts on a wave function. And the effect is just the value of m is either raised by 1 or lowered by 1, depending on which operator you are using, L plus or L uh, minus. So A L M, m here is just some complex uh, constant or complex number. So what are the properties of the ladder operators? They commute with the square of the total angular momentum. But again, I would like to emphasize, doesn't necessarily mean that they share the same eigenfunction. In fact, uh, the ladder operators doesn't have an eigenvalue equation because they always change the uh, wave function. So they commute with L squared, but they don't commute with LZ. So the commutation relation of LZ and L plus and minus is plus and minus H bar L plus and minus. And similarly, with all the ladder operators, the adjoint of the racing operator is the lowering operator and vice versa. So let's now have an example. 
So find the eigenvalues of L squared and LZ, the total angular momentum squared and the Z component of the angular momentum LZ. So you are asked to use the direct notation for the eigenfunctions for uh, simplicity. Okay, so how do we do this? So we need to use uh, these two results here. So we know that L squared doesn't commute with uh, L the ladder operators. Oh, sorry, they commute with the ladder operator, it's zero, but it doesn't commute with LZ. So the meaning of this is that uh, the, the, the role or the places of the operators can interchange. So L squared, L plus, just equivalent to L plus L squared, but not the same for LZ. LZ, L plus is basically L plus LZ, then plus H bar L plus. And for the minus, the other, the lower side. Now, uh, we need to find the eigenvalues of L squared and LZ. So we need to make an eigenvalue equation. So for LZ, this is the eigenfunction LML in the notation. This is the eigenvalue, and this is the eigenfunction. And since they are compatible with each other, these two operators, LZ and L squared, are compatible with each other, the same, they share the same eigenfunction but they have different eigenvalues. So, uh, one thing that we also have learned in the previous chapter is that if psi, the function of psi, is an eigenfunction, then the operate, ladder operator acting on psi is also an eigenfunction. So, <clears throat> using this uh, analogy or property we can uh, we can have LZ acting on the eigenfunction L plus <clears throat> minus LML so since we know that using this LZ, L, LZ, L plus and minus, this combination of these two operators is just equivalent to this, then we can just uh, replace LZ, L plus and minus with uh, this one. So basically, this you will get L plus and minus LZ plus and minus h bar l plus and minus so we raise we replace this two operator combination with this one acting on our uh, eigenfunction l and l so <clears throat> simplifying we have l plus and minus lz First acting on L and plus and minus H bar, L plus and minus acting on L and L. So we already have defined this earlier that LZ acting on the eigenfunction, this will actually give us the eigenvalue, say mu, L and L. And simplifying this, so you now you are now left with constant mu, then L plus and minus acting on LML, then plus and minus H bar. So simplifying you will get uh, mu plus and minus H bar of L plus and minus acting on L and sub L. And this is LZ acting on the new eigenfunction L plus and minus L. It's an eigenvalue equation. So this is the eigenfunction, and this is the corresponding eigenvector. Uh, now, if you will notice, the effect of this new eigenfunction is just to add h bar or to subtract by h bar, depending if your eigenfunction contains the L plus or L minus uh, operator. And from here, we can conclude that <clears throat> mu must be a multiple of h bar. The eigenvalue for LZ, which is mu, must be multiple of h bar. And in fact, uh, mu is actually ML 
each one. So this is now the eigenvalue of Lz. So if you go back to the eigenvalue equation, this one, so mu is ml h bar. It's a multiple of uh, h bar. Where ml here can have negative, zero, or positive uh, values. So we now know that if Lz acts on L on our sign and our wave function, the result is the eigenvalue is ML h bar L ML. Okay. Let us now try to find the eigenvalues of L squared. Now uh, we know that the values of ML from negative L to positive L. That's the value of M, the quantum number M. So for M is equal to L, that's the highest state. For M is equal to negative L, that's the lowest uh, state. So if you apply, for instance, the tracing operator to L, L, so the value of M is L, that's the highest state, the result of this is zero because that's already the highest state. You can no longer increase to the or go to the, this is already the top of the ladder. This state is already at the top of the ladder, so you can no longer go beyond it. <clears throat> so, and if you act LZ on this state, LL, you will actually get. So it's m h bar, so m is equal to l, so l h bar, l l. So we need to get what is the value of the eigenvalue if l squared act on l l. In order to solve this problem, so we need to solve this eigenvalue. Now. We can do this if we try to uh, utilize the ladder operators. Now, if you multiply L plus or L minus or the reverse L minus and L plus using the given definition, so you will get L plus and minus is LX plus and minus I L Y. You multiply it in the opposite, you will have LX minus plus I L Y. Now, if you simplify this, you will actually get L squared minus LZ squared plus and minus H bar LZ. This is L plus and minus L minus plus. So please make sure to uh, remember this result since we will be utilizing this in the future uh, examples. Now, uh, from here, we can actually solve for L squared. So we can actually write L squared as L plus and minus L minus plus plus LZ squared minus plus H bar LZ. So we can now write the total angular momentum operator L squared, this, this operator here. In terms of the raising and lowering operators and the LZ operators. So we can now write L squared acting on L, L, the top state as L, the minus L plus plus. LZ squared or LZ, LZ plus H bar LZ. So when LZ acts on that one, you already know the answer. It's LH bar L, L, similar to this, to this operation uh, here. And L plus acting on L sub L, or sorry, the LL uh, term, 
will give you zero because this is already the top state, the top of the ladder. And racing it, uh, there's no point racing it because it's already the top of the ladder. So simplifying this, this will give you L squared acting on L, 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 L plus 1, H bar squared, L, L. So this right here is now your eigenvalue for L squared. Uh, for M is equal to L. You can do the same for L is equal to negative L, the lowest state where in that case we need to use the the lower signs version you need to use l minus and you will notice that you will still get the same eigenvalue meaning the eigenvalue of l squared doesn't depend on the values of m it only depends on uh, l so in general l squared l m is equal to l l plus one h bar squared l ML. So this is now the eigenvalue equation for L squared. So a summary. This is the eigenvalue equation for uh, L squared and for LZ. So the eigenvalues for L squared is L L plus one H bar squared. And the eigenvalues for LZ is ML H1. Uh, with the focus, let's fo focusing on the Z component of the angular momentum. This means that if you if you measure LZ, the values that you will get are either zero, plus and minus H bar, plus and minus two H bar, and so on. So it's a multiple of H bar, and this is a, a manifestation. Of the quantization of orbital angular momentum that orbital angular momentum can only be in certain values so it is quantized you cannot find the value of angular momentum which is uh, a fraction of h bar it must be a multiple an integer multiple of h bar let's now go to another example so in this example uh, the, uh, we are asked to find uh, the complex constant in the racing and lowering on the ladder operator equation. We introduced this equation earlier, and we are asked to find ALM, the complex uh, constant number. So how do we do this? So in the earlier in the earlier uh, problem, the previous problem, we have obtained this relationship. <clears throat> so we obtained that uh, relationship. Now, if we sandwich these operators between two uh, test wave functions, or their eigenfunctions rather, L, ML, L minus plus, L plus minus, L, then just equivalent to this one here. So L, ML. You will have the operation is L squared minus LZ squared minus plus H bar LZ. L and L. So uh, from this uh, operation, we can actually group this into this one. So instead of uh, this operator acts on the cap. And we can let this operator act on the bra. And if the operator acts on the on the bra, we just take the adjoint. So basically, this operator becomes uh, L. The adjoint of L minus plus is L plus and minus 
the adjoint of the bra is the cap. So, L, M, L. Adjoint. The adjoint of this, so this term, basically that term. Okay. And you will have uh, L plus and minus acting with L and L. So, you let this act, we already know the eigenvalues of L squared and LZ. So L squared acting on that one will give you L, L plus one, L, ML. And LZ, this is basically two LZ, two operations. You, you, you act LZ twice on this operator. So you will get uh, MH bar and another MH bar. So basically you get M squared, H bar squared. And then another LZ here acting on that one, you will get MH bar. And simplifying that one, uh you will get l l plus one h bar squared uh minus m squared h bar squared minus plus m h bar squared and you will have l m l l m l this is basically uh This is basically one. So similar with here, L plus acting on L, uh, that's actually, we have defined this as ALM. So basically you have ALM adjoint or a ALM conjugate, and here the result, he the result here is ALM, ALM. So you will have absolute value of ALM. Good. You will have uh, the bra, and the cat, and just, the inner product of the bra and the cap is just equal to one. So ALM squared here is just equal to this one. So if we simplify this, you will get L, L plus one, minus M, M plus and minus one. Each bar squared. So to solve for ALM, you just take the square root, it's gonna automatically take the square root, square root, and that is our AL. So in summary, this is now the value of ALM. So when the ladder operators acts on a wave function containing the quantum numbers L and M, then the constant ALM is just this one. So as an example, uh, say we have L is equal to 1. So when L is equal to 1, we know that the values of ML or M from negative L to positive L, so negative 1 to 1. So negative 1, 0, and 1. So this will have three distinct states. The state 1, 1, the highest state, the top of the ladder, the state 1, 0, and the state 1, negative 1, the bottom of the ladder. So if you add the racing operator L plus to the middle state 1, 0, using the formula, you will get square root of 2h bar 1, 1. So you get the top ladder, the next uh, step in the ladder. And if you similarly, if you add the lowering operator on the middle state, you will get the lowest state for the bottom of the ladder, which is 1, negative 1. So this is uh, a manifestation of the ladder operators. So for another example, uh, you are asked to show that this, you need to prove or show this commutation uh, relation. And use these results to obtain uh, our original uh, commutation relation between LZ and LX, which is equal to IH bar LY. Sorry. So I'm not going to solve all of this. I'm just going to solve maybe one. And I will let, and then I will let you do the rest. So in this case, we need to uh, recall this commutation relation identity. If you have A, B, 
C to operators A, B, and C, the, commutary, the commutation relation of A, B, and C, just equal to A, the commutation relation of B and C. You take out A because A in this side, plus commutation relation of A and C, and you take B here. Similarly, if uh, you have A and B, C, you will get B, A, C, plus A, B. Okay. So let's start with the first one. I'm just going to solve the first uh, one. The commutation relation of L, Z, and X. So from the equation that I gave you earlier, L, Z is X, P, Y, minus Y, uh dx and then x so you use this uh identities and you will get x p y x y p x x so X doesn't commute with itself. PY doesn't commute with X, so basically this term is zero. And Y doesn't commute with X, but PX commutes with X. There's a term here. If you expand this, there's a term here that will be non-zero. And you will get LZ X equal to IH bar. The first thing that you need to I'm just gonna do the first one. The same steps you do the other uh, example. Uh, provided that you have already obtained this six uh, commutation relation, so <clears throat> you can now you're now ready to prove this one. So to prove that one. The commutation relation of LZ and LX. So you will get LZ, LX. We will try to expand uh, LX. You will have LZ, YPZ, minus Z, PY. We wrote LX here in terms of uh, the momentum and position components. <clears throat> so you do the same. Uh, so you will get LZ YPZ minus LZ DPY. So LZ and PZ doesn't commute. So if you will notice here, oh, actually they commute, the answer is zero. LZ and Y, they actually don't commute, the answer is negative i h bar x. So you expand this using the given uh, commutation relation similarly here and you should obtain uh, ih bar dpx minus xpz which is the definition of uh, l y that one So let's now go to another example. So this is the last example. So find the commutation relations LZ R squared and LZ P squared where R and P are in Cartesian coordinates and show that the Hamiltonian commutes with all components of L provided the potential energy depends only on R. Okay. So for this we will start our solution with the commutation relation of LZ and R squared. <clears throat> so, in Cartesian coordinates, LZ, uh, R squared is just X squared, Y squared plus Z squared. So, you will have LZ. Commutation of LZ and X squared. 
commutation of LZ and Y squared plus commutation of LZ and so in the previous problem, you already know the commutation relation of LZ and X squared, or sorry, LZ and X. And you just expand this using the first identity identity that I gave you. And you will actually get here. So similarly, if you do the commutation relation of LX and R squared and LY and R squared, you will still get the same result, LZ and zero. You do the same for uh, LZ and P squared, you will still get zero, and you will notice that LX and P squared also commute. LY and P squared, they also uh, commute. Now, uh, the Hamiltonian just P squared over 2M plus your potential energy is assumed to be a function of only R. So we can actually write potential energy as some constant alpha and of powers of R, R to the N. So in general, if you do if you use r to the n instead of r squared, in general, lz and r to the n will also be zero. You can just you can check this one. So I'll just leave this uh, to you. So lz rn, lx rn, ly rn, and if you generalize that one, that will actually give you the l vector is l lx, ly, and lz. And the R to the N operator actually commutes with each other. So when you now try to find the commutation relation of the Hamiltonian and the total angular momentum L, H and L, so you will get P squared over 2M plus alpha R to the N our uh, potential energy l is lx x hat plus ly y hat plus lz or lz l the lambda vector so l and rn they commute and actually l and p squared they also commute and you will get uh, zero. So the hamiltonian and the total angular momentum actually commute with each other. They are what we call compatible uh, observable. So that is the end of the lesson. So I will see you again in the next lesson, which will now focus on the second type of angular momentum, spin angular momentum.